Good morning. Welcome to morning prayers with us today. If you'd like to follow with a service sheet, then you'll need to go to deadermanardleyparishes.org.uk and on the home page find service resources and in the list find morning prayers from the Northumbria community. Uh, my name's Susan and I'm going to be leading our time this morning and we'll just start now by praying together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. As I was preparing for today, I was reminded of a night when I woke up in Bible College and uh, we were experiencing a, a mild earth tremor at that time. And I wasn't that bothered, I knew what it was. I turned over and went back, tried to go back to sleep, but I very quickly became aware of screaming and yelling and running around uh, the rest of the uh, residence. So I put my dressing gown on and went out to see what all the fuss was about. And I found a lot of 18 year olds absolutely terrified uh, because they'd never experienced an earth tremor before. And I had to sit up with quite a few of them and make them cups of tea and hot chocolate just to calm them down before they could settle for the night again. Um, now for me I found that quite strange because I'd lived in Japan where I'd experienced quite severe earthquakes and was sort of used to just going and standing in doorways or sitting under desks and uh, yeah you sort of got used to it although it was a bit scary at the time but um, once you survived a few, you sort of thought, well, maybe I'll survive the next one as well. Um, but it was it was quite a, an interesting experience to see people who, for the first time in their lives, were realising that things that they thought were quite solid and immovable were, were not solid and were not immovable. And this really sort of takes us into our reading in Revelation today. Um, because we're being, going to look at Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 13 and this is the letter to the church at Philadelphia. Now Philadelphia uh, in that region of Turkey was um, Asia Minor um, was an earthquake city a lot of it was um, devastated and broken down and a lot of people lived outside of the city and came into trade and everything because so much of it was damaged and they had to learn to live with severe earthquakes um, most of the time and I think part of this letter um, as you'll see is is making a contrast between the instability of the land that people were living in uh, and the stability of the kingdom of God but shall we read it first so this is Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 to 13 to the church in Philadelphia to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these are the words of him who is holy and true who holds the key of David what he opens no one can shut and what he shuts no one can open I know your deeds See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet 
and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So we start off with the words of him who is holy and true, for we know that God can be trusted. There's nobody more trustworthy than our Lord Jesus Christ. And he holds the key of David. Now this key um, is a sign of authority. Uh, whoever holds the key to the bank uh, has the authority to open it up and hand out the money. Anybody who has the keys to a house has the authority to enter that house. And uh, for Jesus holding the key of David, uh, he's holding the key of the key, um, has the authority of life and death. And it's Jesus who will decide who comes into his kingdom and who remains outside his kingdom. And Jesus is making it very clear to the Church of Philadelphia that he knows all about their deeds, all about their perseverance. And he has placed before them an open door that no one can shut. He is welcoming them into his kingdom and he will make sure that nobody ever refuses them that entrance. Uh, an open door is often used uh, in other places in scripture to, um, as an illustration of an opportunity to share the good news with people. Um, and some people would see that Jesus is giving them an open door to evangelize at this time. Um, so there's a twofold meaning in a way because he's also saying that he has the keys uh, to invite them and let them into his kingdom. And he recognizes that they're weak. He knows that they feel that they have little strength. And yet he commends, that, commends them for keeping his word and not denying his name. So they've been through persecution. They've been through trials. Their faith has been tested and they have stood firm even though it has racked them and left them weak and helpless, they have hung in there. And Jesus is saying that although they're weak, he, he is strong and he will ensure their victory. And he will make sure that although they have suffered persecution, there will come a time when anybody who has been persecuted, anybody who has undergone duress for their faith, will have those people brought before them because every knee will come to bow and proclaim Jesus as Lord. And so unbelievers are going to come under a great time of testing, but the Lord Jesus is going to keep those in perfect peace who trust in him. There will come a day um, when unbelievers will have to kneel and admit that the good news that we shared with them was the truth and that they failed to respond to that. And I think verse 11 and 12 is lovely. I'm coming soon. Hold on to what you have. Sometimes I, I, I often say to the Lord, you know, I'm hanging on by my fingernails here. I really need you to come and help me. And I think we all have times like that where we, we want to hang on. We are hanging on, but it's by a thread. And the Lord's just acknowledging, hold on to what you have. No one's going to take away your crown. The one that is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. And I, I love this image because when you look at a church, when you look at a temple and you see a pillar, uh, 
that's not going anywhere, is it? It's it's a solid piece of architectural, um, whatever they call it, and it's holding on. A part of the roof is holding on to it, and it's immovable, and nobody's going to just pick it up and walk away with it. And we're going to be pillars uh, in the temple of our God. We will never leave it. And I, I love that feeling that once we're allowed into the kingdom, no one can pluck us out of his hand. And he's going to write um, on them the name of his God and the name of the city of God. And it reminds me here, if you remember, sometimes d uh, people who donate money for a building, often a church, uh, will have a little plaque put up that they've donated or a chair has been donated by somebody and it's a, a pictorial picture of, of something that has been given by somebody and it's a memorial to them and we will be pillars in the kingdom of God and God will have our names written up there. And so there's a lot of hope in this. Um, I think especially at this time when everything is feeling quite tough and people are having to make very s brave decisions really. This uh, asking us to stay at home and stay at home as much as we can and really, really think two or three times whether we really need to go out of our door for any reason at all, apart from a daily walk for some exercise and those essential things that we need to do. And there's been a lot of discussion, hasn't there, that people are, are pushing uh, the rules as far as they can go rather than keeping as safe to the rules as they can. And Life does feel very unstable for many people at this time and we may feel it too, but we can look down and know that we have a rock under our feet, that our faith in God will give us strength when we're feeling weak and our faith brings us into another realm of living and so we need to be patient and pray for others that we may have those conversations with them where we can encourage them to find that peace that passes all understanding and keeps our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. So let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you that you are in control you're in control of the universe, you're in control of the earth, you're in control of our country, our government, our lives. This pandemic, Lord, and Father, you know it's squeezing us. It's squeezing us like possibly nothing else has squeezed us in our lives before. And Lord, we know how tough it is as believers. We know how tough it is when we know you and can walk with you and we can feel your strength when we are weak. But this is a trial for non-believers, for unbelievers, Lord. Their lives are being squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And Lord, we cry out for mercy. We cry out for mercy, Lord. You died on that cross that everybody in the world could be saved. Your will is that everybody could be saved. And Lord, we pray that this squeezing that we are going through will bring many people to cry out to you for the first time in their lives, to cry out for help, for strength, for understanding, will cry out in repentance, will cry out in response to your Holy Spirit, meeting them in their hearts and minds and spirits. We pray, Lord Jesus, for mercy for those that we know that we've talked to, 
and who are outside of your kingdom. And we pray, Lord, that Holy Spirit, you will visit them. You will give them that epiphany moment, that moment of realization that you are real, that you care, that you love, that you want to save them, that you want to work out your plans and purposes for their lives, that you want to bring them through this time of trial into life and life in abundance. I pray for each one of us this morning, Lord, that you will just remind us that just as you are faithful to us, that we can be faithful to you as we read your word, as we sing songs of praise and worship to you, as we lift up holy hands in worship. Lord, we bless you and thank you that you are not only almighty God, but our heavenly Father, who knows and loves and cares for each one of us by name. And Lord, we long for the day when we will be pillars in your temple, when we will be with you forever and see you face to face. So bless us, I pray today. Be to us all that we need and give us the strength to enable us to encourage and build others up in their faith too. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's finish reminding ourselves that Christ lights the way for us. Christ as a light illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks into me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. And so we finish our time together with a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, and may he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. So I pray you will have a good day today and that perhaps you'll join me this evening as we have a time of prayer at five o'clock when we'll be looking at Psalm 22, which again I think will link very nicely in with uh, what we were looking at this morning and perhaps in encourage us in the Lord Jesus. So hopefully see you this evening. In the meantime, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>